Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We're continuing our Big Ten football predictions today. And our next team... Maryland Terrapins. So Maryland is led by DJ Durkin, a second-year head coach at Maryland. Last year, he actually did a pretty good job getting them to a bowl game. Uh, they unfortunately lost to Boston College, and it was a very good game, 36-30 to loss. Uh, but not bad for a first-year head coach. So this year, he returns 13 starters. They do have to break in a new quarterback with Caleb Henderson, but they return their running back in Ty Johnson and uh, a very dynamic wide receiver in DJ Moore. So I feel like the offense will be the strength, even though they return more defensive starters. Um, Maryland, you know, they've, they've done fairly well since their transition to the Big Ten in 2014. Uh, went to a bowl game that year, went to a bowl game last year. Uh, so we're going to see how they're going to do. Initial look, very brutal schedule. Um, they draw the top two teams out of the West here in Northwestern and Wisconsin, and then back-to-back -back games at Minnesota and at Ohio State. Uh, it's very challenging for Maryland this year. So I think it will be a struggle to get back to a bowl game, but let's see how they're going to do. So they do have the misfortune of opening up the season at Texas. We all know Texas is a very dangerous place to play, uh, whether Texas is good or bad. Uh, it's just a very tough place to play. And this year, Texas is going to be a very improved team, led by Tom Herman, uh, the hottest name in coaching. We all remember that hire. Uh, and I really think he's going to have Texas on the rise and could really turn things around this year in his first year in Austin. So uh, with Tom Herman there, uh, expectations riding high at Texas, I really don't think Maryland's going to be able to go on the road and upset the Longhorns. It would be a shocker, if you ask me, if Maryland travels all the way down there and upsets Tom Herman in his first game. Don't think it's going to happen. Get the loss. And they get Towson. Easy FCS team. Bounce back from that Texas loss. That'll be good. Build up their confidence a little bit. And then they'll get a bye week going to UCF. So uh, hopefully they can get an easy win. Don't have to worry about anything in this game. Uh, and then get the bye to rest up. So good. Probably restful game against the, uh, Towson. Then they get the bye weeks. It's almost like two weeks of rest in a way, especially for their starters. Bye week going into that UCF game. A UCF team that will be very dangerous in the American Athletic Conference. Uh, should improve. They did go to a bowl game last year, but I think they'll improve uh, on top of that. Uh, but I think that it's at Maryland. I really do think Maryland has the talent. The talent is there. UCF, Central Florida should not be a problem for them. I think they will get the win over there. And they're starting off the season 2-1, and one, which is not bad at all. But then they go into conference play uh, starting in late September against Minnesota, now led by P.J. Flight. He returns 12 starters. Uh, he does remind me a lot of Tom Herman. Both those coaches are very young. They bring the intensity. They bring the energy. Uh, and I think both these guys could do very well in their first year at their new school. So uh, I really don't think Maryland's going to be able to travel to Minnesota and get the win here. Uh, I feel like Minnesota, even though they do have a new head coach, is going to be uh, a pretty decent team in this Big Ten West. So I think they're going to get the loss here. And then, obviously playing the toughest team in the East, Ohio State, on the road. Just doesn't bode well for Maryland. Uh, I really do think Ohio State is going to be very dangerous. I predicted them to go undefeated. Uh, the schedule is very easy for them. And I don't think Maryland's going to be able to go on the road and defeat the Buckeyes. I think that's just too large of a task for them. And then right after that, Northwestern, probably one of the uh, toughest teams out of the Big Ten West, could challenge Wisconsin for that title. Uh, they do get them at home, luckily, bouncing back after two straight road games. Uh, but Northwestern, I think, is just going to be, once again, too tough of a team. They're led by Justin Jackson at running back. Uh, that's going to be huge for them. Uh, and I just don't think they're going to be able to upset Northwestern. I really do feel like Northwestern is going to surprise a lot of people. I know a lot of people aren't buying into that hype, but they should be because Northwestern is going to be a dangerous team. And I don't think Maryland's going to be able to upset the Wildcats. And then at Wisconsin, um, you know, the Badgers went to the Big Ten Championship last year. Uh, played very well. Unfortunately, lost in the hands of Penn State. This year, they're looking to bounce back, get back to the Big Ten, pot uh, potentially be in the college football playoff. It's on the road. Wisconsin's not taking any step back from last year. If anything, they're going to take a step forward. Don't think they'll be able to go on the road and beat the Badgers. And this four-game stretch here for Maryland is really going to define the season because right now, I have them at 2-5 and five, uh, with only two easy wins. But look, that's such a tough four-game stretch at Minnesota, at Ohio State, Northwestern, and at Wisconsin. So a middle-of-the-pack Big Ten West team, and then you've got the top team, in, top team in the East, and then top two teams out of the West. That's just a very brutal schedule, and three out of those four are on the road, so that just makes matters even worse. Uh, Indiana, back at home. This could potentially be a win for Maryland, I'm not going to lie, but I feel more confident in Indiana, led by Richard Legault. I really do think that their quarterback and Nick Westbrook at wide receiver, that dynamic duo, they're going to be very dangerous on offense. And I feel like Indiana also have a first-year head coach. 
Uh, they're going to be able to surprise a lot of people. They're not going to take any step backs if you ask me. And I think even though this game is at home for Maryland, I think they will lose to the Hoosiers uh, in this game, unfortunately for them. Luckily, they get Rutgers, probably the worst team in the East right now. Um, they really have not transitioned well since they joined the Big Ten. Uh, they get Rutgers at home. Actually, take that back. They're actually playing Rutgers in the Bronx at New York, which will be kind of a, kind of a cool matchup and a cool location for that. Um, but I really don't see Rutgers pulling off the upset. Rutgers has just really struggled. I really don't think the Big Ten was a good move for them. Uh, and Maryland, I think, does have the talent. They have the talent to be a good team. It's the schedule is brutal. Uh, it really is. But So I think they will finally snap that long losing streak, that five-game losing streak, get the win over the Scarlet Knights with Rutgers. Get to that third win, which will be huge. Unfortunately for them, they would have to win out to get to a bowl game because they only had three wins. Michigan at home, a team I think will take a step back this season uh, from their 10-win total the past two years. Uh, I know a lot of people disagree with that, and I could potentially see Michigan getting to 9-3. and three. Right now I have them pegged at 8-4. and four. Uh, But with this game, uh, Maryland coming off the win, hopefully, and they know what the stakes are, they need to win out. The Michigan game could be winnable, especially since it's at home and they know the stakes are high. But I don't see them beating the Wolverines. I don't see them upsetting the Wolverines. It could happen. I just don't see it happening. And then two tough games at Michigan State, another very tough place to play, as we all know. A team Mark, led by Mark D'Antonio, who I think will turn things around for Michigan State this season after a 3-9 and nine year. Uh, last season, on the road, don't like that matchup at all. And Michigan State will also be fighting for a bowl spot at this point. And then, unfortunately, by this point, they're out of bowl consideration. Playing Penn State, probably Ohio State's biggest threat in this Big Ten East. Don't think they're going to be able to upset the uh, Nittany Lions, especially since Penn State could be playing for a Big Ten title berth or potentially a comfortable playoff uh, position in this game. Uh, even though it's at home, I don't see them upsetting Penn State. And Maryland takes a step back in DJ Durkin's second year. I have them going 3-9, and nine, which actually would fit a pattern. If you go back and look, in 2014, Maryland made a bowl game. That was their first year in the Big Ten. The next year, 2015, they went 3-9. and nine. Last year, they made a bowl game. So this year, will they go 3-9 and nine and continue that pattern? We'll just have to wait and find out. But I'm excited to watch this Maryland team. I'd like to see if DJ Durkin can win some of these big games uh, and get this team back-to-back bowls. I don't see it happening because the schedule is just so hard. Like I said, that four-game stretch is just brutal. But we'll just have to wait and see. Very excited to watch them, though. Hopefully, they'll prove me wrong. But for right now, I'm going to keep them at 3-9. and nine. So... Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe, and please continue to keep sharing our videos, and we'll see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.